right, it's a new day, new me. Um, so what we're doing today is uh, we're taking out uh, the old fuel filter um, and replacing it with a new one, um, which will hopefully help clear up some of our fuel delivery issues up front. The fuel filter fits in here. And this place is pretty gross, so I'm going to uh, take a wire brush thing to it and try and clean up some of this rust, spray it down with some uh, rust-oleum to help uh, preserve it, and then put the new filter in. Um, I will give back to you when that is completed. Here are the bolts for uh, the uh, <coughs> fuel filter. Let's try and get those cleaned off as best I can. Okay, now we're going to try and install the new fuel filter. <sighs> All right, let's make a rust barrier, shall we? That's uh, been sprayed, so hopefully it'll preserve that a little bit longer. Now to put the fuel filter in. All right, I have the fuel filter in and not too shabby. I uh, cleaned off all the scaly rust and uh, sprayed it down with uh, the rust-oleum. And, and I have an extra piece left over. That's how good of a mechanic I am. So now, thankfully, we get to move on from being under the car, I hope. All right, with the new fuel filter in, um, I am, took this uh, fuel line off and uh, was spritzed with gasoline, as was everything around here. So I am very confident, that the, and it seemed like it was clean, tasted clean, so I am very confident that the gas is making its way to the carburetor or the throttle body injector. So the next step for the gasoline is going to be through this, which I believe is called the uh, fuel pressure regulator. So it could be gummed up. And beyond that, we're gonna be into uh, the uh, injectors here. I have removed the uh, electrical from it, so we're going to be uh, taking a look at that and seeing what we can figure out in regards to that. Now, for some brilliant engineering, the way you get these screws out is from underneath with a screwdriver uh, that has no possibility of fitting there. So. That's going to continue to be a problem to fix. <sighs> okay. I think 
we know we've got fuel coming up from the tank through the lines that line into the carburetor exploded all over my face with gasoline so we know that the gasoline is making it up to the throttle body injector so at this point I think it's time to pull off the throttle body injector and clean it because that's the last step before the fuel injectors which are not firing so that is I think what we're going to have to do at this time and I'm not gonna lie it's a little scary because I don't really know how to put it back on and I know that's gonna be the the challenging part but um, I took pictures of it with my phone so I can hopefully get all the pieces back together um, but yeah uh, I'm pretty nervous at this part, but, um, you know, fortune favors the bold, right? lines off. I'm trying to tap this to this to try and make a, uh, a circuit. I've got the uh, battery hooked up to both ends of these and uh, we are not getting a connection. So maybe I've got that on backwards. The other one's working. Go oh, stay over here. Stay over here. Ah, well look, it lit up. So we've got a circuit. At least it's working on that one. We did not have the light on the other one though. So there's a problem with that circuit. Interesting. Interesting. Let me retest it just to be sure. Oh, now it's working now. Well, I don't know what that means. Wait a minute. Okay. All right, this is grounded, obviously, since I'm, I'm on the power end of the battery, the positive end, and it's lighting up. So, but it's not lighting up without that. <sighs> I'm thinking those are bad. As you can tell, it's still on there. I sprayed a brake cleaner inside of these things to try and clean them up, but I'm going to just put a whole bunch of gasoline in there and see if it can fire off because it's a big engine so maybe it needs a lot. Way, way too much.
it may just need a lot of gasoline. needs to be turned, I don't know. <laughs> that seems worse. How about that? I mean, like, go big or go home, right? Hey, that's too much. Bring it back just a little bit. Maybe just, I know I still haven't figured out the fuel part of this, but you know, one thing at a time. get back to you maybe a new perspective would help underneath the front of the car it's not really uh, helping me much but maybe you all can see something I can't I just don't know This would be the hardest part trying to figure out uh, once we got under the hood um, so I don't really know what to do at this point um, I've tried pouring gasoline down the carburetor and it doesn't start uh, the fuel injectors don't seem to be injecting fuel but based on all the things that I've seen uh, it, the fuel is getting up to the pressure release valve so I'm thinking that maybe if I go get some new fuel injectors, we can make something happen with that. I'll let you know. They say that a mechanic is only as good as their tools. So I picked up some more to see if we could uh, maybe try and figure out what's going on. Um, I got a new multimeter. Um, this is just a cheapo one from uh, Advanced, nope, from AutoZone. It was about 20 bucks. Um, then I also ordered this thing, which is a uh, OBDI-1 scanner. So the Ford cars from like 1980 to 1995 used OBDI or OBD-1 um, to uh, test the electrical system. So. We're going to use this to see if we can maybe see if the car can tell us what's wrong with it because I certainly cannot. Um, so yeah. Theoretically, this should be fairly simple to use. All we have to do is plug uh, these ends into the car's uh, 
uh, computer system, which is right here, I believe. That looks, uh, that looks how it's supposed to look based on uh, our research. So let's see if we can't get that plugged in and uh, see if we can't get uh, the computer to tell us what's going on. Um, I think the top part of the triangular portion goes uh, into the machine. Let me see if I can't get that put together. All right, so we've got this uh, hooked into the computer. So the next step is to turn the car on, not to do the ignition, but just flip the key all the way forward to the run mode and then turn this on and then magic should start happening. Let's, uh, let's take a look. Alrighty, uh, we now have the car in the on position. There's a uh, noise because I can't turn the heater off. That's fine though. So when I hit on, it should begin the test, I think. Nope, need to hit the test button. Get that good clicking. All right, this little box means it's sending codes or receiving information. 23. All right. Um, the O means that it's testing it in the key on um, motor off. It's receiving another code. 85. Okay. And I only know this because I read the book that came with this. This is not something that I was born with. 23 again, because it sends the code twice. All right, so we got two codes, the 23 and the 85. Now we'll have to look those up later. There's the 85 again. Ten. Okay, that means it's done with that portion of the test. Still receiving. Eleven. Okay, that means everything's fine on the C, which is the continuous. Ten means it's done with that portion of the test. Look at that. I learned something. Okay, so the codes that it threw off were 85 and 23. So... The 23 is the throttle position sensor out of range. And the 85 is the canister purge solenoid circuit failure. Or the shift solenoid 3443. Pretty simple, right? I don't know what those mean. I'm not going to lie. So, huh. that's fine. Um... I'm going to say that this little machine, which is like $30, uh, is going to prove pretty useful um, and uh, helpful. And uh, so uh, anything you can do to try and speed up the diagnostic process is, uh, unless you're very good at it on your own, is probably pretty useful. So now I'm going to need to try and figure out what to do here. Um, the temperature is dropping. Merry Christmas to all of you, by the way. Um, and I don't know. I was watching a video on, and I'll link it in the description on how to put a distributor in. Maybe I try and do that. Um, or do I try and tackle the this thing? I did test this with the multimeter. Um, so... This one's an auto range because I got I tried to get the idiot version, which you know would go for me. So if you set it to ohms, which is the horseshoe thing, this tests the resistance that you're having. So if you have a a high number, like if you have a one, then it's an open circuit, and if you have a really low number, then it's a closed circuit. Um, so if I put that on the positive. It's hard to do with one hand. Uh, put it on the positive and the negative. We could see 
if it's a closed or an open circuit, meaning is power going to be getting into there? Hup. Hup. Uh, maybe like chopsticks? Maybe like a pencil? Ugh. You don't want to do the ohms if you have any power going through because that can short out your machine. Uh, I wasn't able to do that one handed, but we ended up with like 0.04 to 0.06 ohms. So I think what that means is that fuel injector has a good circuit. So I still haven't heard it click though. Um, so I'd like to, to do that because it's got a little um, solenoid in it that turns on and off real fast to spurt the gas out. But I don't know how to test that. So I'm still working on it. One thing I just noticed uh, that um, you may have already known about is if you look on the front of the fan case here, it's got a lot of helpful information if you know what you're looking for, which I most certainly do not. Um, it's got a wiring diagram. Uh, oh, vacuum hose routing. That, um, this could be really, really useful if I can figure out how to, how to read it. Um, so that's excellent. Yes, hang on to that. Uh, and then it's got all of this information, um, which the firing order is a piece of it. 152 nope 1542 rolls off the tongue um so that's part of the firing order um so let me check over all of this see if it helps all right so i took the distributor cap off uh which <laughs> may have ended up being a mistake but you know that's okay what is um, so that one is where the number one spark plug should go, and that should uh, that should be pointing up. Ooh, I can't. This thing won't turn any more than that. Uh huh. Hmm. Uh. Because it should be pointing, I think, back, uh, back of the engine, and it's a little off right now. So that, I mean, like, still don't have fuel, but um, that may be kind of why it's not starting really. Oh, what is that? Is that something that needs to be plugged up? Anybody know? Let me take a look at the distributor, see what I can figure out. So, I got the distributor cap off, um, and I cleaned it with some brake fluid, and tried to clean up, uh, I think they're called the points. I found this thing, I don't know what it is, some, some sort of a sensor. Uh, the end of it was really bad, so I tuck, duct taped it, so hopefully uh, it'll keep working. Um, yeah. Keep these things clean, if possible. Uh, cleaned up the tips of those. So, although, if the motor's on top dead, if the motor's on top dead center, this needs to be pointing that way. Because when you put it on, it only goes one way. And the one's pointing that way, so. The motor's not on a top dead center, and I need to try and fix that. Still haven't addressed the fuel problem though, so I don't know what I'm doing. So if the firing order was wrong, and I was trying to turn it on earlier, mm, I'm sure some of you groaned, because that's probably not good for an engine.
<sighs> okay, um, well, I think that was better. Um, it did run for like a second or so, so that's some real big, real big headway. Um, maybe uh, the wires, the, uh, the distributor wasn't wired up correctly, um, and that would certainly cause issues, um, but I just don't know. Um, so I've got to figure out the fuel thing. The fuel injectors are not injecting. So, on the CFI, Central Fuel Injection. So I've got to figure out how to replace those. I'm gonna to have to take the throttle body off. I got new gaskets, so that shouldn't be a problem. I got multicolored electrical tape to help uh, make sure that I can mark things where they are. So that'll hopefully help out with that. Um, but I think we moved forward, which, uh, which is good, because, you know, it ran for like, you know a second or so so thank you guys so much for watching I, I really appreciate it I'm happy to have you with me on this journey um, I'm learning a lot trying to figure out things and um, I hope that it's entertaining for you and maybe you're learning something too and you know we can we can learn together and as always if you have any ideas or questions or comments please let me know because I could definitely use the help uh, I appreciate it, guys, and I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.